Good morning, everyone. Um, I am here on behalf of PPK, my client, and the Florida Lottery. We are based out of Tampa, Florida. And as Steve said, one of the biggest things in the category uh, that people probably don't think about is the red tape that we have to endure. So I am going to have a mini, mini case study I'll be showing you today. I aptly named it Florida Lottery Leaps into Jackpot Out of Home because it kind of took us a lot of nudging to get the client into uh, the 100% digital out of home space. So just a quick table of contents. I want to talk to you guys about an overall quick summary, problem analysis, agency task, solution assessment, and then finally what our agency recommendation was. So through this case study presented today, PPK was effectively able to solve our clients out of home problem um, by trans transitioning from 100% static bulletins to 100% digital out of home. Um, by converting to 100% digital out of home, we were able to utilize an RSS feed um, to display the jackpots of over a billion dollars that perfectly mimicked the um, look of our old legacy static units um, that a lot of people are probably familiar with in whatever state you come from. And <laughs> so the nimble nature of digital out of home uh, really provided some additional benefits for the client and I'll kind of walk through those things in a couple moments. Problem analysis, okay. So, um, so what was our dilemma exactly? Uh, well, the majority of state lotteries um, in the country are using the former static bulletins that I have um, off to the right here. They're called Sunshine Units. Um, that is the entity that um, leases out these units. It's called Sunshine. They produce these giant panels that you will see on this screen here, which are mechanically rotated based on um, whatever the current jackpot amount is. Um, so the creative, as you can see, is a vinyl that is wrapped around the board and then the, the digits are affixed to the vinyl. And so um, what you can probably not see is the fact that because of the vinyl only printing million that the digits can only rotate up to 999 million. Any of you, I'm sure, hearing billion, right, over million are probably gonna run out and buy a lottery ticket um, a lot faster, right, if you hear 1.2 billion versus 999 billion, or 999 million, excuse me. <laughs> So the underlying problem with the system was that we were hindered, right, from communicating these over billion dollar jackpots, which really up until a couple years ago had never really hit that threshold in lottery existence. So quite simply, our agency task was to find and recommend the best option for integrating um, statewide awareness of the billion dollar jackpots into our out of home plan. Uh, research shows that when the jackpot is super high that there's um, incremental sales that are driven for the brand um, and uh, and uh, and that's pretty much it. There's a lot of incrementality, there's a lot of word of mouth there. People are really excited, they're running out there to buy tickets and um, we wanted to make sure that we were driving that awareness with our plan. All right, so after many, many, many months of vetting, uh, we narrowed our options down to the three that I have here on the screen. Um, so our first two options we're actually still static bulletins, um, but with a couple different approaches. So for the first op option that we, um, we assessed was static LED, D LED digits, excuse me. So the way that these worked were, these were static units that were fixed, affixed with large LED digits on the, on the, on the board. And um, our biggest issue with this option was that it required a massive upfront investment from the client in order to build these LED panels because the existing static inventory in, in the state that was able to accommodate these digits was very low. Um, above and beyond that, we would have had to deal with a massive amount of approvals and zoning permit laws that we would have had to gone through to be able to actually get these units up on there. So it really wasn't a wise choice for us to do. The section, second option, excuse me, was uh, static, um, we call them M and B panels. This is actually used by the Georgia Lottery. So the way it would work is it was a vinyl still, but the um, M, where you can see million, would actually be a panel that could be switched out when the jackpot hit a billion dollars. Um, and then you would still have the rotating mechanical digits above that to signify the actual jackpot amount. The issue with this primarily was the lead time to be able to go out and have service crews service the boards to be able to 
flip the panel from M to a B was very extensive and it, it was a very long lead time that made it almost impossible for us to be able to update every single board in the state if we were to choose that option and thus kind of failing on our agency task. Our third option, which is what I'll get to in the rationale and what we presented to the client and what they approved was to transition into 100% digital out of home. So you can quite clearly see that there's no panels, no vinyl, it's just existing digital units that we mimicked the creative of the static to uh, show on the boards. So, um, I don't have as many slides <laughs> as uh, I was talking about Nicki Minaj in the previous presentation, but I, uh, <laughs> I feel like there's some good meat to this. So, um, our overall recommendation for the digital at home was pretty much driven from a lot of hard benchmark KPI things, right? So, it was the most cost efficient option for us. Um, those CPM efficiencies actually allowed us to purchase a greater number of boards in the state at the same investment, uh, same investment amount. And what that also did for us was able to maintain our historical reach levels, right? So that we weren't having any loss of awareness through the transition. Um, also, uh, our MMM and ROI studies show that the digital units are actually uh, a stronger ROI than static. So on an ROI perspective, it made sense to move from static over to digital. Also with the nature of these boards, right, that the creative is a lot more flexible. So when the jackpot is super low, we are able to uh, switch the creative and advertise more products outside of just multi-state games like $50 scratch-offs. Obviously, we're gonna get a higher return for a $50 scratch-off versus a dollar Mega Millions or Powerball ticket. Um, my other point is that these are more weather resistant. So the static units that I was showing you before, we had to actually insure those units and it costs a lot of money every single year for us to insure them and make sure that they weren't flying off during a hurricane because we're in Florida and that they're not gonna hit uh, a random person on the street and chop their head off or something like that. Um, and so also with that, there's maintenance fees involved, right, when we had to uh, repair the units previously. And then my last point of rationale was that the visibility, in my opinion, um, is highest with these units. Um, as you guys probably know, static units typically require like a lot of um, backlighting for illumination to make sure that the visibility is, is extremely high at nighttime. That's not an issue when you're dealing with digital out of home. And that's pretty much it in summation. Um, Transparently, this is my first time speaking at a conference, so thank you to everyone for uh, giving me grace and patience. I'll, I'll wipe the beads of sweat off my forehead, um, and, uh, and thank you so much. Uh, you, if did, anyone... you did great, and you're going to do even better answering questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. And you guys are going to have great questions for him. Go ahead. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, I'm Bobby from uh, TerraBoost, and just wondering, did, were you buying 100% share of voice on those digital billboards? No, that's a great question. So we are um, rotating with other advertisers, and part of that strategy, what we actually did is, while we are 100% digital with, the, um, with the, the jackpot boards, what we did was buy 10 static units across each DMA in the, in the state that had a brand message so that we were maintaining that consumer equity. Will, I have a question for you. Um, you know, the, the Florida Lottery is pretty iconic. They've been around for a long time. I imagine the sell-in to this was not easy to change their mind. Like, what was that change management process to get them to, tr to get into digital billboards? It was a, like, two-year project, honestly. Um, I think it was first a year of them needing to understand that they were limited, right, with the former system, and they were wholly aware that we need to be driving awareness of the billion dollar jackpots. We are competing with every other state in the nation, right, um, for those games. So it was vitally important for us to make sure that we had that awareness. Um, and then it was, the second phase was vetting all of our options. Um, that was difficult as well because the client loves the LED units, uh, to be honest, but it was a massive upfront investment, like I said, and we weren't able to guarantee the same number of boards um, potentially due to zoning permit laws um, and approvals processes. And what, what were the measurement models that you were using for this to measure? Uh, what KPIs were you using against it? What measurement were you using? And how was that different from what you'd done before? 
Um, I mean, it was still, we were still buying against 2554, just like our, our primary um, uh, target demo, and just looking at reach, honestly. Um, so just reach, reach and frequency. Will, thank you. Well, we got no, one more. One here. more, straggler, just kidding. I'm Jessica with Albertsons. Um, yeah, just curious, you know, you showed some creative and ha the millions and billions, and it's, you know, just one letter difference, obviously. Uh, I'm just curious if you've tested anything with, you know, using the big B and the big M, and if that's more, you know, differentiated uh, just in people's minds that it's like an easier, oh, it's, it's turned to B. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think initially the client wanted us to get, get into some extensive, like you know, um, R and D testing against the other options. But we were very adamant about the the fact that we really needed to move to to out of home. Um, we you know have uh, we have a taxpayer funded budget, which is really important in the decision making process. Also, a flat budget that we've been working with. Um, it's you know mandated by the state. So we went in uh, very sternly with our recommendation to move to digital home and we rested that on kind of all the options that are all the rationale points that I put before it was you know reach was actually slightly higher to be honest it was more efficient we got a greater number of boards the roi was stronger and we were able to advertise other products to help drive a stronger overall roi we saw the big billboards will are you using anything that's closer to point of sale on smaller screens Yes, we have an extensive in-store um, plan as well. So we buy like GSTV, we're in pretty much every major retailer as well um, through whatever, you know, there's several vendors that have inventory in 7-Eleven, Circle K and whatnot. So yeah, we, we spend a lot in in-store as well. Um, Will, where is the Florida lottery at now? Um, that's a great question. Well, ROI is up, so. Um, <laughs> what's, what's the jackpot? Uh, it's currently, I think, it hasn't hit yet. It's It's been climbing. I think it might be at about 850 right now. So this is, I guess, pretty relevant since we're going to be close to a billion dollars, hopefully soon. So go out and get your tickets, everyone. Will Vargas, thank you so much. Thank that was you cool. So, thank you so much, everyone.